Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Pagam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's Annual Conference and Trade Show, number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris and Leonardo DRS, and we're here on the GM Defense stand to talk to Jim Curry, uh, who is uh, uh, General Motors Defense's, uh, and as well as General Motors' uh, Chief uh, Battery uh, Engineer. Uh, Jim, thanks very much uh, for the time. You've got kind of a unique skill set uh, down here on the production floor at a time when folks are thinking about what uh, electric vehicles, uh, mobile power, and a couple of these other things look like for the future. Talk to us a little bit about General Motors' heritage uh, when it comes to batteries, because you guys have been investing in this technology for decades uh, at the end of the day. That is correct. Uh, we at GM have, ha have a deep history with lithium ion batteries in particular. We have capabilities that span the in entire battery spectrum. For instance, we conduct research and development on lithium ion batteries and are currently developing the next generation of product which will be exceptionally better. We understand the detailed construction of the cathode and anode plates and how to manufacture it. 50% of battery issues are in the manufacturing process. And so the detail and the understanding of just the battery cell manufacturing is critical to a high volume product. In taking that knowledge, we can then engineer a battery module and a battery pack that is highly reliable, highly resistant, and very, very economically uh, reasonable. Taking those modules in our cars has, has been uh, proven to be very successful for our company. Our mission is to take that General Motors knowledge and scale it up to military applications. We bring the, the reliability, we bring the high volume cost structure, we bring the stability along with years and years of research development to the, to the forefront uh, for the military. Uh, talk to us though a little bit, I mean, it, it is a competitive field. You have a lot of Japanese manufacturers that are in the space as well, Chinese manufacturers are in the space as well, although from a national security perspective, nobody is gonna be acquiring a Chinese uh, technology. Um, you've got Elon Musk, who's actually been investing uh, rather dramatically in uh, the capabilities sort of writ large, not just to support Tesla automobiles, but other applications, home power and a couple of other things that he's uh, doing. I mean, I, I know a friend of mine who has one of their home power uh, uh, generator sets. What differentiates do you think what you guys are doing from what the competition is doing? We currently have a proven track record of over 4.3 billion miles driven by our customers. We monitor that data as the customer allows. We have 10 years worth of experience with product well over 200,000 miles in range. We collect that data and we're currently putting that knowledge into our next generation product. The other part of battery packs are the cost. We're significantly leveraging scale to bring the cost down and the energy density up. When you look at military applications, um, what are, right, it's a scalable technology you guys have. Talk to us about this generation, you mentioned lithium ion but what the next generation of batteries are gonna be, because everybody is looking at increasing power density, dealing with heat problems that come with it. Um, I'm gonna ask you the obligatory lithium ion and fire uh, question as well, uh, whether you're on a vaping thing or a, you know, telephones and things like that that have had that challenge. But as you look at that, how do you harness this technology in order to have it available for military products and what's the roadmap you're using to get to that next generation as consumers are looking at electric vehicles with much, you know, to, to be gasoline powered range and flexibility as opposed to, hey, every X couple of hundred miles I've got to plug in and charge whether I like it or not. Some people want to get in a car and drive that 560 miles on a tank of gas. I know that that's something that you guys are trying to do as well. That's correct. So the next generation of battery technology starts with higher energy density, and a more stable uh, business case. With that, we're making adjustments to the cell to enable fast charging at a much higher rate. Fast charging has been a customer demand, and we see the trend both in GM defense and 
to our consumers as something that's critical. So we're working and focusing on increasing the fast charging capability. The energy density allows us to scale up even higher. You talk about concerns of charging on the battlefield. By scaling up the energy density and increasing the battery size, we feel that there's an opportunity for some short range missions that are uh, over several days allowing enough reserve power for surveillance and radar and anything else that the military desires along with being able to return without charging the battery. So the next generation technology fuels both fast charging and the ability to extend the mission without having to charge. Um, and uh, what are the military uh, advantages of that, right? I mean, if you look at it, you're now running generators, you're running the main engine, uh, and most of the time you're powering radios and electronics and other sorts of uh, things with it. What are the, uh, the case to be made for larger battery banks and even hybrid and electric powered vehicles on a future battlefield? It, uh, electric vehicles are quiet, and with the increase in electronics, and autonomous and GPS and satellite tracking, the power needs of, of these vehicles is significantly increasing. With a large battery that provi provides propulsion and enough power to, su to supply all of the electronic needs for days, we think that, that there's a, a huge benefit here for the military in terms of quiet surveillance. Um, and what about uh, safety? Uh, right, I mean, we've had some fire incidents that have happened with lithium ion batteries because, again, they're packed with an enormous amount of energy for, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm still stunned that my iPhone has enough power to last all day. We're using the living daylights out of it and at the end of the day, right? So, I mean, you have to calculate that's a lot of power that's actually in a tiny space. Um, and how battle damage resistant is it? Because at the end of the day, the military is always interested in, okay, if it, this takes a couple of shots, are these battery cells still going to work uh, without having a World War II? <laughs> we were talking about World War II submarines earlier, so we won't talk about that. But um, you know, how resilient these packs are and what the safety factor is with them. We do extensive safety testing. We've developed our own proprietary in-house safety testing, but it doesn't stop there. We start with a deep analysis of the battery electrochemistry. We take that electrochemistry and engineer it into a battery pack and do safety testing on both the module and the battery. We also have layered safety. We have high reliability software. We have a battery state estimator model for state of charge that's extremely robust with self checks. And so we layer through every part of the design and then finish with robust testing. We are so safe, we will test the battery first before we allow it into any vehicles. So the safety check is very comprehensive. And, and how resilient is it, right? I mean, so if, if one of your big battery plates, for example, right, I mean, that you put in the floor of a vehicle or something gets damaged, is it something that still continues to operate even if, for example, one end of it gets hit by a bullet or fire, does the rest of the battery pack continue to work? We have a, a safety protocol and we shut down the battery should any of the cells get damaged. We have comprehensive voltage monitoring on every battery cell at all times of operation. The second a problem is detected, should anything occur, the battery pack automatically shuts down and the main contactors open to secure the stability of the product. And, uh, and so a way around that, so for example, in a battle application, you may want to put, instead of one large battery, multiple smaller batteries that are tied together so that in the case of damage, the other four cells, for example, or four units can still continue to produce power. That's very possible. Switching between multiple battery packs and connecting them together is a very simple engineering task, and that's a distinct possibility. We can also layer them and raise the voltage and charge them quicker, for, for, for example, 800 volts, and then redistribute that and operate them at 400 volts. Pretty neat. Um, and is there a limit to how scalable this technology is? I mean, so could you start to power very, very large, very heavy armored vehicles with this, even at appreciable ranges, and then combine that with an alternate power source? I know you guys are leaders, for example, in fuel cell technology, but even with a diesel generator, and be able to get quiet running over longer periods of time than we have possible today. The ability to scale this is almost endless. It's defined by the space within the vehicle, 
and the specific application and, and usage profiles that we see. But it's very, very flexible product that, that allows the layering of modules um, uh, to a, a degree that's uh, unfantable. And what's next after lithium ion? Next generation batteries right now, I, I'm not able to disclose, but you will be impressed. <laughs> I, I suspect, I just wanted to say that I've asked that question several times and Jim has been not much more forthcoming than that. Jim, thanks very much, absolute pleasure. Thank you very um, much. As, as somebody who's always been fascinated with electric cars, even going back to the turn of the century, I think many people don't realize that electric cars were very, very popular at one point in America's history before the internal combustion engine took over. So it's interesting how everything has uh, come full circle and all you have to do is drive an electric car once and you kind of want to keep driving electric cars because <laughs> nothing else has the torque. They're glass smooth, they have one gear, fast, <laughs> and you go. Yeah, it's, it's really, really neat. And again, when you go to military applications. Um, and so as you guys are looking at this, you're looking at any military power application, aren't you? From replacing a start cart to going in a nuclear submarine, to going into anything, to go to an advanced solid state battery. That's correct. We're exploring possible applications for underwater submarines right now. We're developing an application for a large ground vehicle as uh, a demonstration, one to show our capability and one to bridge networks with the supply base within the defense industry. Jim Curry, battery, uh, Chief uh, Battery Engineer at General Motors, but as well as General Motors Defense, sir, thanks very much and best of luck. Thank you very much.